湾公广集团、华视教育文化频道。您现在收看的是华视教育文化频道。接下来要播出的是《英文文法与修辞二》。同学，大家好，欢迎收看《英文文法与修辞》第一讲次 （Figurative Language， 比喻式的语言）。那我先来为同学介绍我们的助讲老师，呃 ，Stephen s c h e i f e l e r 是东吴大学的英文系的助理教授。Stephen， would you please say hi to students？ Hello， how is everybody？ <笑>好，现在我来为同学讲解我们的单元目标。我们这个单元主要是要帮助同学理解英文写作中它比喻式的语言用法的效果，然后我们还要探讨说隐喻、名喻、拟人化的分类以及运用。接下来我来为同学啊、呃、做我们这一课文的摘要讲解。我们知道说作家他的作品动人哈，通常是因为他善于运用比喻，比方说英国的大文豪莎士比亚他的戏剧。还有美国的女诗人 Emily Dickinson， 他们的诗文戏剧都充满了各式各样的比喻。那比喻呢，通常可以分成三种，我们讲说名喻、暗喻，还有拟人化三种用法。所谓的名喻是，通常是将两种不同的事物，由于它们有某种共通的特征，所以我们就明白说假象乙来做一个比喻，点出它们类似之处。比方说，我们说杰克吃东西像头猪一样。那名誉呢，通常是把这个像哈都拿掉了。那我们就直接说，把甲跟乙做一个连接。像我们说这个人哈，他是铁石心肠啊。我们不讲说他的心肠弱铁石，而是直接就把他的心肠跟这个铁石做一个连接。那拟人化通常就是说哈，我们把。没有生命的事物赋予它生命，让比喻在不仅哈在文学中是不可或缺，通常在日常生活里面也普遍存在。比方我们说一张桌子，它有四只脚，那这个脚哈就是一种比喻的用法。呃，在日常生活中，由于哈这这种比喻的用法过于普遍，因此成为所谓的 d e a t h metaphor， 就是已经死去的名誉。不再生动活泼，让人耳目一新。好，那接下来哈，我要请美国老师为我们朗读课文。We know that men can be very different before and after their marriage. We may enumerate the differences in one case after another. Still, people may become bored. But in "As You Like It," when Shakespeare says, "Men are April when they woo, December when they wed," the world listens and smiles. What makes Shakespeare a world-known writer is his wonderful imaginative language, which we call figurative language. Men and April are different things, but here the author points out a similar attribute: they share. Men are nice and agreeable, like spring, when they try to persuade women to marry them. But after marriage, men could be as harsh and freezing as winter weather. Figurative language is different. From literal, ordinary language, 
in its imaginative use of language. Metaphor, simile, and personification are the most common figures of speech. In a simile, a comparison between two different things is indicated by the words like or as. <clears throat> For example, Jack always eats like a pig. Be as rich as a king. A metaphor is a figure of speech that describes a subject by asserting that is the same as another thing. For example, Lillian is an angel. Simon is a devil. We can also use verbs in a metaphorical way. For example, Jack exploded with rage. Personification is another kind of figurative language in which we treat something that is without life as a human being. The following poem, written by the American poet Emily Dickinson, is a good example of this kind. Death is a dialogue between the spirit and the dust. Dissolve, says death. The spirit, sir, I have another trust. Death doubts it, argues from the ground. The spirit turns away, just laying off for evidence an overcoat of clay. In this poem, death says, doubts, argues like a man. The spirit is also personified so that we see her argue that she has a trust in eternity. The overcoat of clay is also a good metaphor to refer to the tomb for the dissolved body. Figurative language is not only indispensable in poetry and novels, but also in our daily language. For example, a table usually has four legs. Such kind of usage is so common in daily life that it becomes a dead metaphor. Each culture has its own metaphors which may reveal its values and beliefs. For example, when Americans say time is money, that means they believe time to be a precious and valuable commodity, and we shouldn't waste it. When they say money talks, they believe money is powerful and can do a lot of things or solve a lot of problems for them. Each writer may also have specific use of metaphor to show us his or her own individual belief or philosophy of life. For example, a person who writes, life is a gift from God, has an attitude toward life very different from a person who says, life is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. From a cat. <laughs> Figurative language. Figurative 这个单字的意思是说比喻式的、象征的、比喻象征的、抽象的一种语言用法。We know that men can be very different from before and after their marriage. 我们知道男人哈、啊，他可能会非常的不一样。什么样不一样呢？是 before and after marriage. Before 是结婚。呃、uh, ，before 是之前 ，after 之后，在他们结婚的前后会大不相同。We may enumerate the difference. 
enumerate 是指说一一列举，就我们可以一一列举 the difference one case after another。我们可以说一个接一个的一一列举会有什么样的不一样 ？Still, people may become bored。可是呢，人们听了会觉得说 bored 很无聊哈。But in as you like it， 就是在 As you like it， 这是莎士比亚的名句，皆大欢喜。When Shakespeare says， 当莎士比亚他说 ，Men are April when they woo， 男人他就好像是春天四月天一样，当他们 woo 的话是追求，我们讲说追求，呃，求爱。December when they wed， 那变成冬天一样，当他们。结婚的时候，就结了婚以后，他们就从春天变成冬天。那 The world listens and smiles。就莎士比亚讲这话的时候，整个世界都倾听，然后微笑。What makes Shakespeare a world-known writer is his wonderful imaginative language。那使什么是使得莎士比亚成为一个 world-known writer， 就是世界有著名的作家。那主要是由于他有 wonderful imaginative language， 就是很奇特，然后很具想象力的一种语言 ，which we call figurative language。这种语言我们就称为比喻象征式的语言。Man and April are different things。我们知道说，男人和四月是不同、完全不同的两样事。But here the author points out。The similar attributes they share. 可是这个作者他就 points out 就是指出来 similar attributes. Attributes 就是他的特性特质。就有哪些相同的特性特质 they share 就是这两者之间彼此共有的。就是说 men are nice. 男人他很和善，然后 agreeable 很愉快 like spring 就好像春天一样。When they try to persuade women to marry them, 当他们好像想要 persuade， 就是我们讲说，呃，要说服女人嫁给他们的时候，就好像春天一样。But after marriage， 可是，一旦结了婚 ，men could be as harsh as as freezing winter weather。结了婚以后，男人就可能会变成像是 harsh， 是很严酷的。那像什么样严酷呢？就是 as as 像是 freezing winter winter weather， 像是寒严寒的冬天那样严酷。那这种的 figurative language is different from literal ordinary language。这种象征式的语言哈，它和我们日常用的这个普通一般的语言是不太一样的。那主要是 in its imaginative use of language。是他一种想象、富有想象力的一种语言用法，让这个 metaphor、simile and personification are the most common figure of speech。那这三种哈 metaphor、啊、simile、personification 这三种是呃最常用、most common 最常用的。Figure of speech 就是修辞学里面最常用的这三种方式。那 in a simile 就在一个 simile 的话，我们就是是一个名誉，用法是 comparison between two different things， 是将两个不同的东西里面做一个比较。那这个比较的时候是 indicated， 就是指出来，用什么指出来呢？是用 the word。用这个字 like or as， 用 like 或是 as 像怎么样这个字来指出来这两者之间的比较类似哈。那 for example， 我们举例来说 ，Jack eats 啊、uh, like a pig， 他吃东西的时候像一头猪一样。那 but he is as rich as a king， 可是呢，他像国王一样的有钱，就说是吃相很难看哈，狼吞虎咽，可是。啊，真是有钱哈，像国王一样，不是真的国王，或者真是一头猪哈，这是把这两者之间的特性做个比较。A metaphor 
is a figure of speech. 那 metaphor 呢，它也是一种修辞学里面的一种用法。那它是这个是我们讲暗喻哈，它是 describe a subject， 就是描述一个 subject， 一个事物哈，一个主题事物 by asserting that is the same as another thing. 我们用指出来说，它是和另外一件事情是一样的。那我们举个例子给同学看。Lillian is an angel. 那莉莉安她是一个天使。这时候我们这个 like 字就消失了哈，就是暗示，就是说她像天使一样，可是她就是天使。然后 Simon 呢，啊，是个魔鬼。好，那 we can also use verb in a metaphorical way. 我们前面讲的都是名词的一个修辞用法哈，那动词我们也可以用这种比喻式、象征式的用法。比方说 ，Jack exploded with rage。那杰克他 explode 是爆炸，那爆炸不是他真的爆炸，是 with rage， 就是气炸了，气的炸开来了哈。好，这种是修辞法的用法。那下面这个 personification。It's another kind of figure, figurative language. 下面这个拟人法 personification 哈，它是另外一种的象征修辞式的用法。那 in which we treat something that is without life as a human being. 那这种用法我们是 treat 就是把某一件事情它是 without life， 没有生命的事物哈。我们把它当成 human being， 赋予它生命。那我们举个例子来看哈。The following poem written by American poet Emily Dickinson. 下面是呃美国诗人艾米丽·狄金森她写的一首诗，就是它是一个 a good example of of this kind， 是这个拟人法的很好的一个例子哈。我们来给同学看一下。啊 ，Death。It's a dialogue between the spirit and the dust. 那死亡，它是一个 dialogue， 是一个对话。什么的对话呢？是 between the spirit and the dust。它是灵魂与尘土之间的对话。Dissolve， 就是说好。Dissolve 的话是指说消失，或是我们讲说分解。那这是死亡 ，says death。就人死了以后，他说一切都消失了，哈。都尸体，就是你的身体会分解。那这个死亡是这样讲。那 spirit， 这灵魂呢？他就说他的回答死亡的一种说法，就是 Sir， 先生 ，I have another trust。我有 another trust。Trust 就是指信仰。那意思就是说，灵魂相信永生。那 death doubts， 死亡他怀疑。Doubt it, 就怀疑这个所谓的永生，怀疑灵魂讲什么永生 trust， 他就 argues from the ground， 他从地底下，就你人死了埋在地下，他从地底下，然后 argue 在那边跟你辩论者，就说没有啊，没有这样辩论者。The spirit turns away， 然后这灵魂就转身离开了 ，just lay off for evidence， 只是留下一个。Evidence layoffs 留下 evidence 证据 ，an overcoat of clay. Overcoat 就是很厚重的大衣哈 ，clay 就是土质的陶土。好，那我们在这边哈，这个诗非常的有意思。我们先休息一下，待会再为同学继续讲解。In this point. Death says, doubts, and argues like a man. 在这首诗里面，我们看到说死亡哈，他会说话，然后他质疑，然后他辩论，好像一个人一样。那 the spirit is also personified. 这个灵魂呢，它也是拟人化了。So that we see her argue that she has trust in eternity. 所以我们就看到这个灵魂哈。他也在那边辩论着说，他有这个 trust 信仰，就还相信，相信什么呢 ？Eternity，Eternity Eternity 就是永恒、永生
an overcoat of clay. This overcoat of clay is also a good metaphor. This is also a good metaphor. This is also a good metaphor. It is 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 a good metaphor. 就是我们这已经分解了，人死掉，尸体就腐坏，就消失了哈，这个意思。好，我们再接下来看哈 ，figurative language is not only indispensable in poetry， 就是我们这种象征式的语言，它不止说我们在诗或是 novel 小说里面是 indispensable，indispensable 指的是不可或缺的，就是。这种语言不止在诗跟小说里面不可或缺 ，but also in our daily language， 在我们日常生活里面，其实也是不可或缺，也是普遍存在。比方说哈，呃，我们讲说 ，a table usually has four legs， 一张桌子它有四只脚，那这个脚也就是像人的脚一样，也是一种比喻的用法。Such kind of Usage is so common in daily life. 就这种的语言哈，比喻用法是如此的普通，在我们日常生活里面，以至于它变成 it becomes a dead metaphor. 它就已经变成一个 dead metaphor， 就是死去的一种，我们讲说暗喻，死去的一种比喻用法。那还有呢，我们讲说 each culture has its own metaphors. 每一种文化。它有它自己的不同的一种 metaphor， 一种暗喻的用法 ，which may reveal its value and beliefs。那这种，呃，它的这种用法呢，可以 reveal 就显现出，显示出每一种文化它的 value、它的价值以及它的信仰。比方说 ，when American says， 当美国人他说 ，time is money， 时间就是金钱。那这个，他把时间跟金钱做一个连接。It tells us， 就告诉我们说 ，they believe time is precious and a valuable commodity。就是美国人相信，时间它是 precious， 很宝贵 ，valuable， 很有价值的一种 commodity， 像是商品物品一样。And we shouldn't waste it。那我们不应该浪费时间。When they say， 那当美国人他们说。谈啊， uh, 他们说 money talks， 他们说钱会讲话。那事实上，他们就是相信 they believe 美国人相信 money is powerful and can do a lot of things or solve a lot of problem for them。就是美国人讲这个话的时候，他就是相信说这个金钱是很有利，就是万能，然后可以做很多的事情。Or solve a lot of problem, 就是我帮他们解决很多的问题。那 each writer may also have specific use of metaf metaphors. 啊，每一个作家哈，他都可能有他自己 specific 特殊的、特定的一种用法。他对这个暗喻、比喻的一种用法。To show us, 来显现给我们看，说 his or her own individual belief. 告诉我们说，他自己独特的个人的一种 belief， 他的信仰，或是 philosophy of life， 他的人生哲学、生命哲学。那比方说，呃、uh, ，a person who writes， 一个作家，一个人，他假写到说 ，life is a gift from God， 生命它是上帝的礼物、恩赐。那这时候的话，他就 has an attitude toward life。他的一种 attitude to a life， 他的一种人生态度是 very different from a person， 和另外一个人非常不一样。那这个人他假如说 who says， 他说 life is a tale， 生命是一个故事 ，told by an idiot， 是由一个白痴到来 ，full of sound and fury， 充满了声音与愤怒 ，signify nothing， 就是可是毫无意义。就这两种，一个是对生命充满了感觉感
生，另外一对生命是觉得很绝望哈。那下面我们讲的那句话是从马克白莎士比亚马克白里面引述出来的。我们课文讲解到这里，接下来是我们的文法聊天室。Okay. Uh, this week we are going to talk about metaphors. So that uh, do, do you want to share with us that uh, uh, something you think about uh, metaphorical language? Oh yes. <clears throat> oh yes. Um, you speak of dead metaphors, mm -hmm. or what we often call cliches, right, right. like. Uh, Water under the bridge, <laughs> or cut to the quick. Okay. These are so extremely common. Everybody uses these. We often even forget that they are metaphors. <laughs> 好，那 Steven 老师他讲就特别提出来所谓的 dead metaphor， 就死去的一种那个比喻式的语言哈，死去的暗喻。那他讲出来的，像是我们讲说 water under the bridge， 就说覆水难收哈。然后这种就是已经用到老掉牙的，几乎就说他们觉得说对他已经没有感觉了。那还有叫 cut the quick， 就说用言语伤害某个人伤得很深，不是真的用刀子 cut 他哈，而是一种比喻式的用法。New metaphors keep being created, and sometimes they resonate with the general public and. People pick them up and use them over and over again. One example would be: we talk about virus, mm -hmm. and then we talk about a computer virus, mm -hmm. and then we talk about something going viral,、mm -hmm. meaning spreading and being、mm -hmm. extremely popular.、Mm -hmm. And、uh, viral is a new word. For... Yes, it's very,、uh -huh. very, fairly new. Yes, okay, it is. Okay. 好，那刚刚 Steven 老师提的说这个。That metaphor 是已经用掉烂的，就是那个老掉牙的哈。那有新的，呃，不同的世代有新的不同的一种比喻式的用法。那比方我们讲说哈，说 virus 电脑里面都有那个病毒，这当然不是真的有病毒，是一个比喻式。那新的产生的一种那个我们比喻式的用法，就是说 go viral。那 go viral 话，通常就是我们讲说，像是病毒行销。那这个以前根本没有，只有我们这个最近这个电脑时代哈，呃，产生的时候才有的一种新的用法。Sometimes metaphors may be taken too literally. Uh, for instance, just mention one example: the phrase "go to heaven." A lot of people imagine. Heaven is a place right, right. because we speak of going to heaven,、uh -huh. uh, when in fact it's more like a state,、uh -huh. a condition. <laughs>、uh -huh. But it, but you know that、uh, sometimes when people have the near death experience, yes. So they when they come back, they describe the so physically that.、Uh, What? Yeah, but it's not <laughs> something that they've been. It's it's a it's a condition. Uh, it's right, a, right. So you believe experienced Jesus that when、uh, Jesus mentioned that to heaven, he says heaven、thing. is right here. Right, right. He says that very clearly. Exactly like the Buddha, you know the、it's, Buddhism. Right,、yeah. right, right. Heaven is right here.、Oh, no. The kingdom of God <laughs> is among you. 好，所以那个 Stephen 老师特别指出来说哈，像我们讲说。宗教讲说，尤其基督徒讲说 “go to heaven”， 所以上天堂，很多人就把它变得说是好像真的有一个天堂。可是基督当初讲的时候是指说那是一种存在的状态，所以基督讲说这里就是天堂，那就是说人存在的一种状态，而不是说真的有一个那个天堂里面有什么呃有基督，然后有什么什么神在那边。好。那这非常有趣。我们今天谢谢 Steven 老师为我们带来这么有趣的一种那个呃题材。那下个礼拜我们再继续跟同学探讨英文文法与修辞。好，谢谢各位收看，再会。